follow. This is my son. And in today's video, I'm going to teach him and you how to read the Hebrew alphabet. What are these? All right. Uh, here, you can eat these. Hi, everybody. My name's Nelson. I'm a five-time USA memory champion. And this guy is... Axel. Axel. He's my son, my firstborn son. What are you learning in school these days? Doing very good math. Yes. And what are you drawing all the time? You mean at lunchtime? No, when you come home, you, love, you have your little books with the letters in them. You're practicing what? Writing. Writing. He's learning the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite letter, buddy? A, because it's the first letter of my name. Dude. Anyways, he knows his alphabet. A, B, C, D, forwards. He knows it backwards. Can you say it backwards too? Z, Y, X, W, V, U, T, S. Yeah, something like that. That's good. I taught him that, by the way. So, you know all the letters. In English, what if I were to teach you another alphabet called Hebrew? Does that sound cool? Yes. You want to learn it? It's a yes. Sure. Okay. All right. So, there are 22 characters in the Hebrew script and... You know what? I have someone better who can explain this to you. Okay, so I decided it would be a great idea to go to the local synagogue in my town and meet with the rabbi, who was kind enough to answer all my questions. He went through a lot of information. The thing I was most interested in was just to be able to pronounce the characters correctly. I did not want to mess that up. Zayn. Zayn. Yod. Yud. Ain. Ain. Sade. Uh, so, Sadi. Resh. Race. Fatality. He also gave me some fascinating history on the script itself. Like, did you know that the Hebrew actually used today is actually the Aramaic script? I didn't know that. And that there was actually a proto-Hebrew. He brought out this whole sheet that had just like the history of the characters and like where they potentially came from, going back to even hieroglyphics, which was mind-boggling to me. It makes you think twice about the symbols that we write with, that somebody at some point just sat down and was drawing really rudimentary symbols on a piece of paper that meant something. And eventually over time, now that's the letter A, you know? So Something like that. Crazy, but that's that's uh, that's for a uh, that has nothing to do with this video. There you have the Hebrew alphabet. All right, it was nice meeting. <laughs> um, <laughs> All good. All right, we're back. We are going to get started. I'm going to start teaching him each of those 22 characters. <laughs> if you want to learn how to, okay, things are getting out of hand. We better get started. All right. Just so you know what's about to happen here, my son is five, so whatever I'm about to teach him is a very, how do I say this, a uh, very dumbed down version of what I would actually do with my audience. While I may teach him one thing, I'll cut away and then show kind of what I would teach you or anybody learning this script from a mnemonist's point of view. Mnemonist is a fancy word for someone who memorizes a lot with memory techniques. Now keep in mind, I do not speak Hebrew and I did not know the alphabet before researching for this video, but such is the power of memory techniques. I learned it in about five minutes. Granted, I can't speak the language still, I do know how to read the characters and make the sounds. So that is what I am going to impart on you with this video. Where you take it from there is up to you. The point is to show that these techniques can really help you learn pretty much anything in a short amount of time, even if you're five years old. These are my notes. Ugh. So the first one we're gonna learn is called Aleph. What is that? Can you say Aleph? Aleph. And can you guess what sound it makes? It's the first sound of the word. So, ah, uh, left. I. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. What's ah? Uh? Ah. Uh. So, the mnemonic for this, so that you remember what sound it makes and also what it looks like, is to remember an elephant, like an elephant. <laughs> Not an elephant, but an elephant. All right. And it's really easy. You draw a diagonal, the trunk coming up like that, and then the tail, or you could think of that as like the hind foot or something like that. So, you could kind of draw it as an elephant, an elephant. And the sound that it makes, of course, is an ah. Or as I understand, it can also play the role of a silent letter. Can you draw it? Yes. Just copy it over there. Yep, and then give it his elephant trunk. Yep, and his tail. Good, yeah. And what's that one called? Aleph. Aleph, like an elephant. Oh, it's beautiful. Gotta yeah, check that out. Wow. All right, here we go. This one is called bet. Bet? Like when you burp, you go bet. 
This is how you do it. You draw this and then a line at the bottom. <laughs> and you know what that looks like? It's like a mouth and the burp comes out here. Bleh. Now, technically, there is a bet and there is a vet. I didn't teach this to Axel, but they're very similar sounds. So you'll find there's a lot of characters that actually have two versions of them. And there's also kind of like a final version. If it's at the end of the word, we'll talk about that. But technically, the bet has what we call a dagesh, which is a diacritic or a fancy word for a dot in the opening of that letter, which makes it a plosive sound, as Rabbi Marmon taught me. So if you ever want to remember, when there is the dot, it's more the more plosive short sound of that letter versus the longer lasting sound. So if you think of a b versus a v, they're very similar in where they come from in your mouth, but the b ends, it's done, right? But the v is kind of like a longer, smoother sound. So the dot makes it kind of short, which is the b, and then the v is the longer sound without the dot. Now, how do I remember this? Well, I told him it kind of looked like somebody's opening their mouth very rudely and burping, and that burp sound was a bet, like a belch. I know it's kind of gross, but you like that one. Can you draw that one? Yeah. Yep, and make sure, yeah, there you go. And we can learn our first Hebrew word here, where we have an Aleph, a Bet, and then another Aleph, which is the word Abba, which means dad. And again, we're all about images here, and this is how we remember things, so if you wanna remember that Abba is dad, just imagine your dad listening obsessively to Abba. The next one is called, you ready for this? Yes. Gimel. Gimel? Gimel. What does that sound like to you? Camel. Kind of like a camel, but it's a camel with a G. A g gimel. gimel. So you draw his head and his first legs, and then here's his back legs there. In terms of making it memorable, I told Axel that Gimel sounds kind of like camel, which is funny because if you look at the Proto-Hebrew, Actually, the word Gimel comes from some character that looks like or stood for camel. But I think a better one is to think of the sound G like a goal. And Gimel makes me think of like gimme, like give me something. Gimel, a goal. So it kind of looks like a guy kicking a soccer ball. He's like, give me a, give me a score. Give me a, give me a goal. That'll help you remember gim, gimme, and the G sound. All right, next one is called Dalit. Dalit? Dalit. It kind of sounds like our last name, right? But it has a, a two L's. Yeah. Well, what sound do you think this letter makes? D. D. Okay. It doesn't look like a D though. Look at this. You draw a line. Yeah. And then another line. Yeah. Now, Dalit to me kind of sounds like a doll, like to doll it. I don't know what to doll it means other than maybe make it look like a doll. But in terms of this character, to make it dolled up, I might just imagine that there's a bunch of dolls kind of sitting on this. Kind of looks like a table. Picture a bunch of dolls kind of lined up across the top of that shelf, let's call it. That's been doll it too. All right, let's do one more letter and then we're gonna take a break. So this next one is called hey. Hey. What does that sound like? Like the real hay that horses or cows eat. Oh, that's a good one, yeah. Okay, this is what it looks like. So you draw like a little house and then a little wall here to keep the horses in for all their hay. And you can think of this kind of like a barn area where you maybe stack some hay and that little line in the front is like a barn door that kind of keeps it closed, right? And it's kind of like half open. It's not a full door, it's a half door, hence the hay. And this character, of course, makes a huh sound. Can you draw that letter? Yep, and then the little barn door. Good, that's a hay. All right, you get the idea. I don't wanna bore you with all the little chit chat that I did with my son to teach him these characters. So we're gonna go through the rest of the characters a little faster, just so that you can get them in your brain as well. On to the rest of the characters, let's go. All right, the next character is Vav. And the proper way to draw this is really just kind of a horizontal line and then straight down. The best way, I think, to remember this as an adult is to think of the champagne Vav Clico. It's a very good champagne. Vav, Vav kind of sounds the same to me. It helps me remember the V sound. Next, we have Zayin, which kind of looks like Vav, but technically a horizontal line and then a down. So very similar to Vav, except there's a little overhang there. Now this makes the sound Z, like a Z. I like to think that it kind of sounds like Zion. And Zion makes me think of Zion National Park. So maybe you could imagine the shape of this character is a rocky structure that you might see in the park. I don't know, that's not the best mnemonic, but some of these are tough. This is my favorite letter. This is Chet, and it basically looks like hay, but it's closed, right? Remember, hay had the open barn door. 
this one is now closed. It kind of looks like an end if you want to think about it, but there's no extra line sticking up at the top. The way I taught this to Axel is het, which is kind of a weird sound for him. For anybody who doesn't know this, it kind of sounds like hat, just with more of a throaty sound to it. So I said, you know what? Just make that a little dude's hat, right? Little dude's het. Next we have tet, which kind of has this little hook. It wraps around and then goes straight up. And I like to think that if I turn it on its side, it kind of looks like a tent, right? You have the base of the tent that keeps it kind of flat. And then you have this kind of dome kind of housing area and then the opening, right? Cause you gotta get out of the tent. And tent kind of sounds like tet, right? Tet, tent. And this makes a t sound. As you notice with all the names of these characters, the sound that the word starts with is the sound that they make. So tet makes a t sound. This one's called Yud, and this one's kind of interesting because it's literally just kind of like an apostrophe. And this typically makes the sound Y. Now it's the smallest letter, so I had Axel think of Yod, Yoda, <laughs> uh, who's known to be small. So if you can imagine that this little apostrophe, I had him think of it like the, the, the Jedi sword of Yoda. Not that it's smaller, but you can imagine this is a tiny little Yoda sword. Yod, Yoda, Yoda sword. All right, so this letter is Kaf, and it kind of looks like bet, but there's no line that extends on the bottom. It's really just kind of the sideways opening. Now, here comes the degesh again. If there's a dot in the middle there, remember that's the plosive sound. So that actually makes the cuff sound, all right? And if it wasn't there, technically, that makes more of a ch sound. Uh, maybe that's too strong, a ch sound. So very similar to chet. To be honest, I don't know when one shows up versus the other. I'm just telling you what I know. So I like to think cuff kind of sounds like the beginning of coffee, right? So this kind of looks like the coffee mug handle of a coffee mug, a coffee. Yeah, maybe. The important thing with these techniques is to actually visualize in your mind the thing I'm telling you. So if you just kind of like, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. No, no, that's not it. You gotta think of the coffee mug and think of the handle. Imagine holding it and saying cuff, cuff. Coffee. Coffee. Now, one thing I should mention here, some of these characters have what's called a final form, which sounds really advanced. But uh, all it really is, is if this character's at the end of a word, it looks a little different. And kind of the trick to remembering these is these final form ones, all you really do, for most of them at least, is you take the bottom and you kind of rotate it out. It kind of takes that bottom part and drops it below like the line of where all the characters are drawing. I understand. Nothing. I like this character a lot. It's called Lamed, and to me, it looks like a llama. This is the head that kind of with the long neck, this is the back, and this is his legs coming down from the bottom there. And of course, llama starts with an L, kind of sounds like Lamed. It makes the sound L. Ah, no, sorry. This is my favorite, just because it sounds like my favorite word. So we start with a little, kind of like this loose square thing that doesn't close at the bottom. And then we draw dash there, makes the sound M. I like it because it sounds like memory. So I like to think that like, I'm drawing kind of a brain there or some kind of head. And that little dash that goes in is the thought or something that I'm memorizing, right? The idea or the fact or the Hebrew character is getting implanted into my head like a memory. Now this one has a final form too. It kind of breaks the rule I was saying before, but it's really just kind of like a box that closes all the way. Because you can imagine when you finalize a memory, it goes into the brain and it's closed shut. It's there forever, especially when you use mnemonics. Now one thing for sure you're wondering is, where are all the vowels? So the Hebrew alphabet actually doesn't use vowels per se, basically just wants you to know that they happen in between all these consonant sounds. Now, when you're learning Hebrew, there are little dots and symbols that can be put around the consonants so that you know how to pronounce the words and the vowels in between. Uh, these are called the nikud, and that's a whole other thing. I'm not gonna go into that in this video, but I put some resources in the description below in case you do wanna know. Next we have nun, which kind of sounds like nun, like a nun or like nun. Kind of looks like a narrower bet, right? So just kind of straight down and then this little line out. Now to me, this kind of looks like the start of drawing, like say a little Pope hat. And I can imagine a Pope saying that there are no nuns in Judaism. Is that true? Can I say that? I think that's true, right? So there are none nuns, and this character shows that, or helps you remember that. Not that you need to remember that. Amen. And again, this one has a final form too, and all you have to do is really just rotate that bottom bit out, and it just kind of is a longer nun without the line there, because now it goes further down. Now we have samech, all right, which kind of looks similar to the final form of mem, and kind of like tet, but it's closed. So I think the best way to draw it 
is kind of like that. So it's kind of got an overhang there and it kind of loops around. Mem is more boxy and Tet of course has that opening there. Now the way I like to remember this is Samek kind of sounds like a smack. I'm smacking like an open hand smack on somebody's face here. And you can see that little thing that kind of hangs over is like the hair that like blew back when you smacked, smacked them in the face. This one is called Ayn, which kind of looks like a Y. And it's kind of one of these silent letters. It kind of does the same thing as Aleph. I don't really know why you would use this versus the other one. I apologize. And to help me remember that, I'm just, Ayn kind of sounds like an I in something. So this kind of has this little closed cup area here. So I'm just gonna imagine that there's a bunch of eyes in there filling up this little basin here. This one is Pei, and it kind of looks like some of the other characters we've done, but there's kind of like a little curl at the top there. And remember this plosive idea, the short sound versus the long. So Pei and Fei are actually the same character, but the Pei, because it's a P and it's done, Pei has the dot right there. And then if you want the softer, longer sound, Fei, it's without. And since pay sounds like you're paying somebody, I like to think that, you know, this little hook there at the top is kind of like a hand paying money uh, to this character's self. And then this one also has the final form. So, you know, you can imagine that the bottom extends a little further down and then you still have that curl there. This one I love to draw, it's Sadi, and it makes the tss sound, as in pizza. I know that's a Z, but it's a tss sound. So I'm just gonna remember that these are little triangular slices of pizza with pepperoni on them. Just kind of like zigzag together. Help me remember that sound. And then this also has a final form. And again, just kind of bring down the tail there. And it becomes a little more vertical. So it kind of looks like a backwards Y. This one is cough. So this one has two strokes. You draw one that wraps around, not quite all the way. And then kind of like the barn door from Chet, but it kind of goes down. And the way I like to remember this since it's more like cough, cough, like you're coughing, instead of cough, which was coffee. It looks like this could be a mouth and somebody's <coughs> putting a hand here because they're coughing. <coughs> and you want to block that sound. This next one is Raish, and that really is just kind of this angular backwards R, if you will. And that's an easy one to remember because R, Resh, this looks like kind of like an R. If you don't remember how to draw it, I would maybe think of like, this kind of looks like a maybe the elbow, your elbow, and you have a rash on your elbow. Even though it's not rash, it's Resh, Resh. Rush, rush. So I'd be scratching that rash. Next one is Sheen. And this one kind of looks like to me, kind of like a menorah, just with not all the candles there. And you just draw three. You basically draw kind of a U shape, more of like a wider U, and then this one arm that kind of comes out there. And what I will think of, since Sheen kind of sounds like my shin, I'd imagine taking a menorah and hitting someone in the shin with that. That would bloody hurt, right? With a metal candelabra hitting you in the shin, ouch. And technically, if there is a dagesh on that right line, it's the sheen sound. And if it's on the left side, it's seen. So it kind of makes that samech sound, another s sound. Again, I don't know when you use which, but just so you know. And our final letter here is tough. So you draw it kind of going down like that, and then there's the little J hook coming out the side there. To me, this looks a lot like Pi, and I love Pi, you know that. Now, this one is the only one that kind of has that a little foot sticking out there, and I like to think of like, you know, there's a tough guy, a tough guy that does like to kick from time to time. This is a tough character with that kicking foot. And yes, it's a T sound. We already had Tet, there's Tuv, don't quite know when you use which, but they both make the t sound. Now about those final forms, those letters that have final forms, there were five of them. Kaf, Mem, Nun, Pei, and Saadi. Now if you want to remember those quick, just make a little story for those five. So I had a coffee and I was memorizing stuff while I was drinking coffee. Then a nun walked in to pay for some pizza. The pizza is the t sound, reminds me of Saadi. That's it. And then you can remember those five letters have a final form. None of the others do. All right, so that's all of them. You've learned 22 Hebrew characters, actually a little bit more because there were some final forms and some with a dagesh and all that. Now, just to test you out a little bit, see if you can read the following words. Now, you may not know what they mean, but at least you can sound them out and they may make sense. So this first one is Tel Aviv. This word is Hanukkah. And this one, I don't even know if it's correct, but if it is, cool. But if you sound it out, you should get my name, Nelson. All right. Oof. What did you think about learning those letters in Hebrew? Yes. 
Yes, it's approved. Which was your favorite one? B, like this one. Mm -hmm. And what was the name of it? Bet. <laughs> Very good. You know why? You know that, what was the first one called? Aleph. So when you put them together, Aleph and Bet makes alphabet. Really? Yes. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. I hope that helped you learn a little bit of the Hebrew script. I've always looked at it and thought it was a very fascinating, interesting looking character set. Probably the oldest character set uh, that's probably still used today. Definitely the oldest alphabet still used today. That's mind blowing. Right? Yeah. Uh, any last words, my friend? Shalom. Padum. Badum. All right, please like and subscribe. Please check out the links in the description that I provided uh, if you want a little more context behind this video. And if you want to support some of the families that are going through some hard times right now, this world is a scary place. And hopefully this video uh, will make things a little brighter. Uh, it's hard to do right now, but um, we had a good time. Hopefully you learned something. All right, I'm out. Can you say that? I'm out. I'm out. All right. <laughs>